there's a word in in South African which means like basically like rickety, like a bit dodgy. In South Africa, they use the word skadonk. <laughs> Like if it's an old beaten up car, you describe it as being like a bit of a skadonky car or a skadonker. I love that word. Right now I've got a skadonky lighting set up. Watch this. Bright. I've gone to YouTube to get 12 hours of pure bright white screen for my laptop to give me a bit of lighting because it's like 9.30 at night. Um, I don't know if you can see that. There. Look at my phone screen background. It's pretty cool. I made that on my iPad. I've got the Canon 5D, Canon 5, 5D. I've got the R5 set up on video. That's why we've got this nice bokehlicious and I've got the microphone set up as well. My skadonky lighting set up and just wanted to put a little bit more extra effort into this video. Okay, so let's get to the point. I just saw someone on Instagram talking about self-confidence and it got me thinking about my own self-confidence. And you know me by now, I like to share about these realizations that I'm having that are helping me um, have a better life, basically. And one of the things that's really interesting to me is you may have noticed from the YouTube video that I just put out yesterday, if you haven't seen it yet, my self-confidence is mooning right now. Like, I... I do not care what other people think of me at the moment, which is really like such a bonus of self-confidence. There are so many fantastic positive implications of having high self-confidence. And what's the opposite of self-confidence? I suppose it's um, being shy. I've found that um, my self-confidence has shifted big time. Um, and what I mean by that is like where I get my self-confidence from has changed over time and I'll explain why and how and maybe if you feel like you're watching this because you want more self-confidence or maybe you're watching this because you've got a lot of self-confidence and maybe you want to understand it a little bit more. I've spoken about this before right but there are two aspects of being a human being. We've got the ego and then we've got the higher self. Some people call it a soul, some people call it a fractal of the divine Whatever it is, in this realm, in this infinite quantum game that we're playing, we this is my belief, you don't have to agree with me on this to actually get something from this video, but this just as a bit of a background. My belief is that we drop in to the third dimension and we are born with as a soul. The consciousness, your consciousness that is watching this video right now, that is aware that you exist, your awareness, that comes from, at the core, the soul that dropped in. You didn't develop that as a child. Who knows when, whereabouts you arrived with your consciousness as a soul into the body in the, as you grew in the womb. But I certainly have had a, a couple of experiences actually on deeper psychedelic journeys where I've gone into visions of very clear visions and memories of being in utero, in the womb. So it's like... It's not really a, a negotiable. You can, mothers have conversations with their children in, in the womb. Like there's a conscious being before you are born, right? So that's the soul. Let's just say the soul, higher self, whatever that is. In this infinite game, that is the infinite part of you. That's the part of you that when you die, you just come back in for another round or whatever. We don't, come, we don't really know. We assume that a lot of wisdom teachings suggest that we reincarnate each time, that we don't just go to heaven or hell or just end up in, lost in the void for forever, for eternity. It's a cycle. The death is ultimately an illusion. So let's not go down too many rabbit holes because I know this is getting deep already, but consider this. The soul, the consciousness of who you are, the awareness, the core of that is eternal. That's the part of you that doesn't die when you your body dies. On the other hand, at the other end of the spectrum, in order to even have this experience of being a human being, you need to become a human being. Now, the body fades, it decays, it's temporary. And along with it, with the body, we get given a name, uh, we, we um, are told what we're good at, and we're like, we're sort of guided and we, we end up creating an, an ego for ourselves, which is not a bad thing. We need the ego. 
right? We need to be a somebody. But a lot of people, myself included, get caught up and think that's really actually who we are. And to a, a, a large degree, it is. Why not? But they f we forget so easily because we're not really taught about it, about the eternal aspect of who we are. So the reason I'm talking about this is because where does self-confidence come from? For me, my self-confidence, we'll talk about the benefits of self-confidence in a minute, but where my self-confidence used to come from was my kayaking results. I was multiple world champion. I had a lot of people around me telling Benjamin, my ego, telling me that I was really good, that I was successful, and that I had a lot to be proud of. So I, that boosted my ego up. Um, not necessarily in a bad way. Uh, in fact, uh, a deflated ego is pretty useless. Anybody who's experienced depression will understand that when you have a really low se sense of self-worth, it's really difficult to get anything done, right? It's diff You're not magnetic at all. When you feel you have a, uh, a strong sense of self-worth, you're magnetic you can get shit done, things come to you, like you, you crack on with life. It doesn't really matter where that self-confidence is coming from until, and here's the crux, because I built my self-confidence on my achievements, kayaking world champion, and then YouTube star, Instagrammer, photographer, all of these things that I'd done I, it was like building my self-confidence um, out of sand. And then when a storm comes along and suddenly I'm not world champion anymore or the year after my, I won the world championships, I came like 14th, had a terrible race. That really hit my self-confidence. And then when I stopped kayaking, I picked up YouTube. And it was like, okay, I'm going to be really successful at that. But then as soon as I started to fail at YouTube or I didn't or I, I wasn't winning in my opinion or I, I had some kind of failure because my identity was wrapped up in my achievements and therefore my self-confidence was wrapped up in my achievements as they fell I fell too right and this is the beautiful thing about having an ego death right is that all of that crumbles and all that is left really as you begin to realize that you can't just rely on what you're doing the whole time for your sense of self-worth and your your confidence it's like okay now i have to turn and i have to get to know the soul part of myself that's been there all along on all of the lifetimes that we've been here for consistent steady true eternal compassionate Lo unconditionally loving fractal of the sacred of the divine if you want even if you're not religious or spiritual this does make logical sense to me anyway i come from a very skeptical atheistic background which has served me really well as i've started to unpack all of this because the beginning of i was like you're telling me that i'm not benjamin really that that's just a story and that I'm actually this, that how do I get to know this part of myself, right? So let's get back to self-confidence. An inflated ego, a high sense of self-worth, right? Regardless of where it comes from, is magnetic. I was a pretty shy kid at school and I had a couple, you could see the, the cool kids, right, at school, the good looking kids. They had high self-confidence, right? For whatever reason, the highly confident guys would get and attract the girls. That's just kind of how it works, because girls are attracted to that level of self-confidence. If you go on Dragon's Den and you don't have any self-confidence, you ain't getting no deals. It's magnetic. We need it. Things happen more easily. And it's actually a protection mechanism against bullying, against internet trolls against tests that come at you in life to have high self-confidence is to know your sense of self-worth and then if someone tries to like bully you on the internet which people did a lot when i was vlogging right especially like the last few years 
because my sense of self-worth and my confidence was built on the sand, out of sand, a bully could come along and just stamp over and crush my sandcastle of self-confidence very easily because it really wasn't built on any kind of truth. It was fleeting. It didn't come from the depths of knowing who I truly am. My soul doesn't give a fuck about bullies. My soul doesn't give a fuck or get triggered by anything or anyone. It's power, it's pure power. My soul doesn't even fear death because it's like, well, it's just part of the cycle. Like, what's the problem? So when we start to tap into the soul level self-confidence, when you start to get to know that part of ourselves, nothing can shake us. And it's like psychic protection. And it has taken me a while to develop this self-confidence. And I remember being at a couple of side trance parties in Cape Town, and I hadn't really got in touch with this aspect of myself yet. I'd sort of touched it, but I hadn't embodied it. I was still relying on my ego self-confidence. And some dude that I worked with on a film set uh, or something uh, came over and said hello and I recognised him but I didn't remember his name which I really struggled with because I was so anxious for most of the time I was working on film sets. I didn't remember anything about those film sets let alone some dude's name and he took it really personally and then started attacking me psychically. And when I say psychically, it means like he was basically taking all of his insecurities and his pain and blaming me and being like, well, you're such an asshole. You don't even remember my name, do you? And really started attacking me. What didn't help was that my LSD was coming up and I went straight into my head about how I was a terrible person. Maybe this person's right. Maybe I'm not a good person. Maybe I am an asshole. Fuck, I never remember people's names, which I really had a hang up about. So that triggered my ego and my self-confidence went down. And then I had like a really tough couple of hours whilst I battled that demon of lack of self-worth. And one of my ultimate fears, which he really pushed the button of for me was maybe I'm the problem, maybe I'm a bad person, maybe everybody would be better off without me being around. So none of that would happen now, I don't think. Well, if it would come up anyway, I know that that person is attacking me and that's their stuff, you know, that's their stuff for starters. But also my self-confidence now is not necessarily built like a sandcastle. It's built from fucking granite. It's built from eternal, tough, mountain granite, which is my soul. And yeah, we go in between the two and sometimes I get triggered and sometimes I feel like I've got a low sense of self-worth. But when I remember who I truly am, my confidence comes from there. Unshakable. There's many, many benefits to raising our self-confidence up. Switching from ego confidence to higher self-confidence or soul self-confidence is a process. It takes a little bit of time, right? We're used to the one, takes a bit of time to adjust to the other. What really helps is to understand that I have unique gifts. One of my gifts is that I'm very good at kayaking, right? And so that's where a lot of that confidence comes from. Um, But one of my other unique gifts that I've discovered recently over the last couple of years which I'm now sharing with people is that I have an incredibly big heart I have a lot of love to give I have a lot of compassion I can have someone around me um, who is even attacking me and I will still have empathy and compassion for that person I've just got so much love to give because on a deep deep level as a Pisces I fucking know that you are me and I am you so Why wouldn't I love the people around me? Why wouldn't I love everything? Everything's interconnected. We're all coming from the same source. And so it makes no sense to my soul to to not love. It just feels like my natural state of being, which is (laughs) such a gift. I don't have to try to love anyone. 
I don't have to try to love myself. So as that gift comes online, that helps me connect with the truth of my soul. My soul is compassionately loving, unconditionally loving, eternal, not afraid of death, not afraid of trolls on the internet, and is powerful. So maybe you feel like you are shy and you want to bring forth some confidence. Or maybe you used to be really confident and then you got humbled by life, like me, and now you're needing to get your confidence back. Because life keeps going. And if we're depressed and deflated and unsure of ourselves, it's really difficult. Life gets really difficult like that. So the key is to really tap into knowing yourself on a deeper level. And it's not like we can just go, oh, this is the soul part of myself. How it works is you go and you discover, well, that's not me, that's not me, that's not me, this behavior is not me, this addiction is not me, this depression is not me, these are all parts of my story and this is who I find myself expressing as right now, but it's actually not me. And so we dig down and we dig down and we uncover, that's not me and that's not me. And life will do that naturally for you. We have the blueprints all laid out perfectly. That's kind of the reason why we're here. One of the many reasons is to remember who we are on a deeper level. And one of the bonuses is that we get to tap into like infinite, like God level self-confidence. And sometimes the ego gets a bit carried away with that as well. We get a bit of a spiritual ego going and it's like, oh shit, I'm, I'm, I am a fractal of God. And, and, and so it's a journey of like, finding the balance really integrating the ego not pushing it away and shaming it but giving that ego permission to be like yo we can be confident there's two parts of you here and one of you is infinite and fearless can you bring that infinite fearlessness through in any now moment are you practicing that are you tapped into that part of yourself do you even believe that that part of you exists and it's when we start tapping into that part of ourselves that our unique gifts come online and what our unique gifts look like they are the things the skills and the abilities that we have mastered over multiple lifetimes right you ever see those kids that just jump on a piano and they're two and they're just like that soul has been playing piano for thousands of lifetimes or probably hundreds of lifetimes at least so you master something in one lifetime, and when you are born again, there are you can tap back into that skill and bring it through, especially flow state skills like music, singing, art, dancing, spiritual connection, self-mastery, knowing yourself. You bring that wisdom from one lifetime to the next, so there are beautiful beautiful gifts that actually the world needs if you are deflated and shy and you're actually withholding your unique gifts from the world and the world needs them more than ever and trust me it's so fun to have a high level of self-confidence that you can tap into and you know where it's really coming from nothing feels better in this world for a soul, for a human being to be living the life that they came here to live, which involves sharing the gifts that you came here to share. So I hope that some of this resonates with you and I hope it maybe inspires you to um, feel into what might it feel like to connect with a deeper part of myself and share from that place and allow that part of me actually to hold my hair back of my ego as it purges the identities that it was attached to and allow some space we've got to grieve that this is a grieving process as well and i'll talk more about that in another in another podcast and video in order to create something new we have to grieve the old and that's certainly what i've been having to do and i've been pushing it away and putting it off and pushing it away but all of my previous identities that were built 
out of sand, they were sand castle identities. Easy to knock down, any kind of wave comes along they just get fucked. No, no real solid foundational strength. Those identities, they die quite hard and we have to grieve them to let more of the true self come through. If you want to go a little bit deeper on this one-on-one, -on -one, as you may know by now, I've opened up my books to do one-on-one -on -one soul guidance sessions. And it's not just soul guidance sessions, it's emotional guidance sessions, life guidance sessions, anything that you feel like I could help you with, I'm available now for that. You can go to the link in the description, which will take you to my website and there's a contact form there. And you can send me a little email saying, please send me information about one-on-one -on -one guidance calls. And I'll send you the information. Or if you're on Instagram, just slide into my DMs and say, I listened to the podcast about self-confidence. I'd love to learn more about dropping in on a call with you. And I'll get back to you right away. And, we'll have, and then maybe we can sit down for an hour and have a chat about these things. So thank you for dropping in on this podcast, on this video. I love and appreciate you dearly. Get in touch with me if you feel called to. I hope that you got something from this video. And leave a little comment down below. Or if you're listening to this as a podcast, share this with someone who you think might really benefit from it. And if you want to support the podcast, I would love for you to leave me a review. And if you're watching this on YouTube, hit thumbs up, give us a little like, leave a comment. Oh, let's do a little zoom in for the closeout. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. In the meantime, remember to work hard, be nice to people, and stay free. I love you guys. Goodbye.